So today we will be deploying the virtual machines and we will see what all the different options we will be having in the virtual machine. Alright, so what I will do, I will just delete this uh, resource group for now. I will create a new resource group now. I will go to the resource group and click on add. Say like test one and I am selecting uh, East US. No tax. Review and create. Create. So this is how we create the resource group. We have already seen this. Now we will go to the resource group. Now we will be adding the virtual machine to this one. So I will be adding Windows 2016 server. So now <clears throat> resource group, if I have multiple resource group, then I will select on which resource group I need to install this virtual machine. So I'm selecting test one. That's my resource group. Then I will give a name like Windows DC, might be. I will select the location uh, same as East US and you can see here you can browse it's not only 2016 data center you can browse all the images here so here they are different images so according to your requirement you can just deploy what all the images you need for so this uh, session we are using Windows 2006 data center operating system so on the left hand side you can see the different categories according to that categories you can also select the images or different virtual machines so now this is the data center and this is azure spot, spot instance is nothing but it will allow you to compare your prices between pay as you go and your subscription so if you are having a subscription your price might be a little bit different because you are it's subscription if you are paying pay as you go in this service then its uh, prices will be a little bit different so it will compare you and it will give you a comparison between those two prices if it's which one is better for you and it will also advise you so we are in a subscription we don't do we no need of that now coming to the one size so it's currently selecting by default is one virtual cpu 3.5 gigabytes and it will be costing me like 126 dollars and 29 cents per month if I want to change the size, I will go inside it and I will change. And you can see that offering is standard. Family is for general purpose and virtual virtual CPUs. So which kind of like virtual, how many virtual CPUs you need and how much of RAM you need and how much of your data disk you need. And a data disk will be like premium and it's a maximum I, IOPS. And it, this one is a temporary storage. So there will be like one data disk and one temporary, temporary storage. So this temporary storage can be increased, but data disk up is fixed. So the disk is now premium support, this one. And you can see that for certain configuration, premium disk does not support. This one is GPU standard premium. This does not support only for the general, it's supporting, and uh, most in the general, this one version D3 V2 premium disk is not supported, and V3 also is not supported for this one. So, according to different configuration, they are like the disk supports and all those things. You have to keep in mind what you are, what are your actual requirements. Then, on the right hand side, the cost of that virtual machine, if you're selecting the you want to change you can select it and that's it so this is how you can change the requirements of your virtual machine so i am giving like my admin name as moise123 and i will give my password i have given my admin credentials so now next is that inbound port tools so it's asking me the port rules. So I am saying like allow selected port. So if you don't want to allow any port, then you select none. If you want to select any of, <coughs> want to allow a traffic, 
because we are deploying a virtual machine now so how you going to access that machine for that one i will say for windows we will be accessing via rdp so i'm selecting rdp if you want to select multiple you can select ssh also but i am not selecting rdp is the best way to go into the windows virtual machine so if it's a linux you will be going by ssh and uh, http and https so next coming to the disk so operating disk type so you are selecting the premium standard ssd or standard hdd so if you select standard ssd so it will uh, is saying that selected vm supports premium disk we recommend premium disk it's recommending me the premium disk because of the high iops workloads so this one is standard so your virtual machine if your traffic is very much heavy then it will be like uh, chances of your server crashing so uh, standard hdd it's like very not poor quality but if it's a small business and the traffic is like medium traffic then it's good standard ssd is also good but for the big enterprises you don't know that how your uh, traffic will be going up and down because your business might go in the peak hours very peak traffic and in the non peak hours non not much traffic and uh, around the christmas and these kind of different uh, holidays the traffic will be very much if you like shopping center or something or online shopping this traffic will be more so we recommend to take you premium ssd it will be little bit expensive but good so by default the encryption type is default encryption type and it is also giving me that encryption address with customer managed so by default azure is taking care of the managed keys for your encryption of the disk so if you want to take care by yourself if you have a good knowledge of uh, how to manage the encryption keys and all those things then you can take that control manually here by selecting encryption at test with a customer managed key so once you have done that you want to do manually you want to maintain manually then uh, this encryption set so there is nothing available here but if you go here this encryption sets stores the customer key that a disk snapshot will use for encryption into its data so before you are doing this one you have to create your watch uh, manual keys and you have to create a resource for them then it will show up here then you can select that one by that key you will be unlocking the disk to read and write data so by default we are taking a default now so now if you want if you want to attach a new disk you can attach like a create a new disk or an add an existing disk if your organization is uh, already having some more disk which you can utilize you can add it here or if you want to create a new disk you can create it so if you want to give any name you can give like win c d s k so it's an empty disk now so if you want to make this this disk as a snapshot disk or storage blob or anything it, uh, depending upon your requirement you can select it but if you select the empty one you can do it uh, anything or what all you want to do so it's now currently giving me like 1024 gigabytes if i want i don't want that much of that uh, gigabyte so what i will do i will go like uh, 128 gb select that's enough for me for hosting a website So again, the same encryption. If you having manually want to do it, you can select it here. Or by default, Azure will take care of that. Next, okay. So now the disk has been added, and now host caching. So you, what permissions you want to give for that one? Like only read only access or read and write access? So mostly we will give read and write access. So now use manage disk. and unmanaged so managed disk means it uh, automatically azure what it will do it will manage your data into the disk in a proper way now if you want to manually manage your disk then you have to take care of yourself you have to have a knowledge of how to maintain your data in your disk so by default it selected yes i am also selecting yes next i'm into the networking now so it's already created one uh, test one vnet 
and it's given me like a default 10 dot network 10 dot 0 dot 4 dot 0 network and it's already by default given me a public IP address if you want to create a new virtual network you can create your own virtual network or if you want to create your own public a new public IP address with different name then you can select that one so now network security group means your uh, signing a policies in which you are restricting the traffic or so allowing the traffic so by default basic is selected because we are allowing remote desktop so inbound traffic is selected for port 3389 by default we have selected in the first basic uh, first step in basic so that's why it's already allowing here and by default it has taken this uh, settings basics and allow selected port so accelerate networking it's already off here that does not support the load balancing if you have the load balancing created then it will show up here but i don't have any i did not create any load balancer so for that you need to create first load balancer then after that you have to attach that load balancer to this uh, virtual machine so now load balancer of different types one of like the normal load balancer another one is like application gate application gateway works a little bit different and load balancing is just like only balancing the load but application gateway it will balance the load as well as it will restrict the traffic which you have uh, defined in that application gateway so currently we don't have any load balancing so we select no and next management good diagnostics yes we it's on operating diagnostic if you want to keep it on you can do it on and here you can see that location it's nothing available for storage diagnostic record store so we will create a new one so we'll select like uh, dig and it's like here the storage uh, type it's like general purpose generation one or generation two so we mostly go with generation two and it's, and it's automatically given me standard only because it's just a uh, diagnostic storage we are providing that one so now here i am getting error like dig is not supported so what is that it's telling me that the name should be in the lower letter dig it should be okay yep. still again error dig is already taken yep it's done name now performance type is standard now because it's only a diagnostic so it will be standard premium will be like for the high end devices so now if you want to keep a record of this diagnostics in a locally or geo redundant or read only access so locally means within australia geo means outside the australia you want to keep a record or read only access you want to give for uh, like you are creating a record outside australia but it's only read only access for that storage I'm going like locally redundant because I want to create locally now. Now identity system assigned this managed identity is off. If you create on, it's uh, you have to provide your own identity services here. So currently we don't have anything. So Active Directory it's nothing here because we are deploying the Windows Server 2016, so it's cannot attach that one. It does not support it anyhow. Auto shutdown. It's like every day your business is running from nine to five, and you want to shut down at seven. So you do, you no need, need not like log in into this Azure and turn it up manual. You can just turn on here, and you can provide the time here, and it will automatically be shut down, and it will also send you a notification to your email address. You have to send uh, set the time and a uh, time zone. According to that time zone, it will shut down and it will send you a notification. So enable backup if you want to enable backup, you can enable, and it will create a vault for you by number two seven eight in resource group text one, and backup policy will be daily policy. That's a default policy. If you want to create a new one, customized one, you click here on create, and you can create your own backup policy, customized one. Currently, we are going by default. If you have like a, if you have already created your keyword, then we will be selecting existing. 
So we will select the subscription first. It's not showing because there is no keyword. So first you need to create the recovery service one. Then after that it will show up here. We will select that one. So if you want to create a new one, you can also create a new one. It will create a new uh, recovery service world for you. Currently for test practice, we are turning off the backup. The problem here with this uh, backup is that, uh, not a problem, but uh, you cannot delete with uh, right away. So if you delete your backup now, after 14 days, it will be permanently deleted. So what I will do, I will create a uh, keyword service keyword service mode in that service what i will create this backup so if i want to delete this backup i have to wait for 14 days once i initiated the command like uh, delete the delete the backup it won't delete it it will show you that it has been deleted but it won't be deleted but after 14 days it will be deleted then only you can delete your created keyword total keyword you can delete it otherwise it will take 14 days delete everything so next so next going to the advanced one here you can see that if you want to select an extension so let's see what are different extensions so if i go to extensions it's giving me like agent for cloud work load protection extension and agent for windows servers so these are like different extensions so what kind of extension you need if i say like a microsoft anti malware extension create i'm attaching that uh, microsoft anti malware at, uh, protection for my virtual machine so like excluded files in location if you want to exclude any files in location nothing so everything is like by default and say like okay scan day if i go on edit scan day is on saturday so one on which day you want to do the scanning i will say like on mondays and scan time should be like 120 seconds yeah. and it will be performed for like two minutes in the then see on here at midnight 12 a.m or 2 p.m sorry 2 a.m 120 means 2 a.m. 0 means 12 a.m. 60 means 1 a.m. So select put. And for, if you want to attach one more, let's again select it. And this time we will like select the network watch. There is that one network watcher. Yeah, network watcher agent for Windows. Just create and we can attach those extensions. Like according to your requirement, you can uh, select your extension and attach it. So I'm selecting two one. One is for malware detection and one is for network watching. So it will watch my network traffic and behavior and it will provide me notification if something suspicious if it's found. So host group, if you have any hosting service, then you can provide that one. Now proximity placement group, if you have that group still, we don't have anything for now. So more. So what is proximity placement? Allows you to group Azure resources physically closer together in the same region. So it will create your all of your resources which are in your one data center. It will be given a one particular location and one particular machine. So everything, all the resources will be on your one machine physically. If it's, this one is now virtually we are doing everything and physically it will be on your one virtual machine sorry one server so coming to the vm generation generation one is the old one we will be selecting the generation two x tags and review and three so this is how we create the virtual machine there are different categories and different uh, things you need to keep in mind before you create the virtual machine and we will say create it will take like three to four minutes to create these virtual machines. So now that the, my virtual machine has been in almost done. So 
so at, this is the deployment of the virtual machine so it is taking a little bit time so once it's installed we will be doing the remote uh, remote desktop into that virtual machine and we can browse that virtual machine but when we go to the overview after the deployment we will be having one private address and one public ip address so if i go to virtual machines it's been created so here you can see like one is like private address one is public address so when i want to do my remote desktop with uh, take the remote connection for um, for this machine i will be going to this public ip address this is one for uh, private ip address so any doubts for the today's class